virtual Family Arts Saturday at Burlington City Arts. My name is Jessie and today we are going to let our imaginations blossom as we look to artist Joanne Carson for inspiration to build our own blooming sculptures. Joanne Carson is currently exhibiting a sense of wonder at Burlington City Arts and her work is very much inspired by nature. You can see um, reference to all of the different seasons, particularly with the way that she uses colors, using very bright warm colors in some of her pieces and cool colors that remind you of snow or ice in other pieces. Oftentimes, she builds these um, tree-like structures that seem to have these fantastic blossoms that take on this dreamlike quality. You can visit her work at Burlington City Arts Gallery, or you can look online at burlingtoncityarts.org and take a virtual tour. One of the pieces that you can see when you visit Burlington City Arts, either the gallery or during the online tour, is the volunteer. This is a painting made with acrylic on canvas that Joanne Carson did in 2013. Notice the blooms. These are blooms and blossoms that we may not see, in fact I've, I've never seen in real life, but they have a very imaginative quality. The colors are bright and the forms are fairly simple. You can see some round-like shapes in that pink flower and maybe some sea-like shapes in that red and yellow blossom. Today we're going to be inspired by forms like Joanne's tree in the volunteer. We're going to think about simple shapes too, like the roundness of that pink blossom or the C shape in the other blossoms. And we're going to be using modeling clay and found twigs to create a fantastic blooming sculpture from our own imagination. Beautiful fall day and I've decided to set my studio up outside to take full advantage of the wonders of nature. You're welcome to join me working outside, but an inside studio will be great too. Just work wherever you feel most comfortable. Let's go look and see if we can find a small twig that will be perfect for this project. Looking at the base of a tree is a great place to find a fallen stick or twig. Let's see what we can find here. As I'm looking on the ground, I've got a couple sticks that I can choose from. I've got this stick, which is um, an awesome stick, but I think it's going to be a little too big for this sculpture project. This one is going to be long, but the top of it has a lot of wonderful little twigs. You're going to know that it's a good twig to use and small enough if you can easily snap it off. So I know that this delicate twig is going to work great. The supplies we're going to need will include our found twig. We'll also need a small piece of cardboard and you'll need some modeling clay. Modeling clay is awesome because it comes in this fantastic rainbow assortment of colors. And modeling clay is great because unlike uh, Play-Doh, it will never dry out. So you can continue to use this and not have to worry about storing it in a certain way. It's easy to form with your hands into different shapes. And um, it doesn't need any baking or firing like other types of clay. So you can form it with your hands and then after you make a sculpture, it's going to keep that shape. I also just bring a piece of scrap paper to work on my table surface because it's nice to have a clean surface to work with my modeling clay. Also, it'll help protect the table. So I'm going to begin by building a foundation for my sculpture with some modeling clay. And I can choose any color I want for that. This is going to be the roots of the sculpture. I made myself a 
pretty good chunk of red because this is going to be the foundation. I want to make sure it's really strong and I want to use enough clay for other parts of our sculpture when we're building our blossoms. We're only going to need a teeny bit of clay. So it's fine to use a larger portion of clay for our base. And I'm going to um, start getting used to what the clay feels like in my hands and start smushing it into a ball-like structure. After I've got a ball, then I am going to take my cardboard piece and I'm gonna press my clay onto the cardboard piece. And it is not going to need any adhesive, any glue or anything like that. Once I start pushing with my thumb a bit, the clay onto the base and I'm just pushing it down onto the base then it's gonna stick on its own. You can see it's pretty strong, it's not coming off. I did not use any glue. I've just put that down by smushing it into the cardboard. So now I have some clay in the center of my cardboard. I'm going to find the twig that I want to use for my sculpture. Again, this is too much twig, so I just wanna choose part of it and I'll just snap it right off. If it doesn't snap easily with your hands, then it's going to be too big. I'm gonna make it a little shorter up here too. All right, so I've got this twig and I am going to stick it into my clay, almost like you would stick a birthday candle into a cake, just pushing it all the way in and I'm gonna let it go all the way down to that cardboard for extra strength. And so now it is in here and I know it's strong. I've turned it upside down. I'm gonna push my clay up just a little bit more. Making sure it's in there, very strong. It's gonna hold it up. If you notice that your stick is not in there and it feels like it's wobbling over or too heavy, look for a smaller twig or build up your clay structure just a little bit. But this seems to be working great. So already I have the foundation of my sculpture and I'm ready to start building some blooms. I'm gonna show you a couple techniques to make some simple shapes with clay that you can use to build blossoms on your sculpture. One technique I really like using with clay is rolling a coil. I start by getting a ball of clay putting it on a flat surface and then taking my hand and rolling it back and forth against the clay. As I do that, it is becoming a little bit longer and more narrow in width. The more I roll it, the longer my coil becomes and the thinner it becomes. I can keep rolling this out to be super thin. It becomes like a worm or a piece of spaghetti can see I can make a really long coil. I could keep rolling this to make it even thinner and longer if I choose. Another technique that I like using with clay, especially for this blooming sculptures, is just rolling balls of clay. So I just take a pinch of clay and then put it in my hand and roll in a circular motion on my palm. I can squeeze it with my fingertips if I need to, and to create a ball of clay. This can be really great to build with. The smaller amount of clay I use, the smaller little ball I can have to work with. So it all depends on the amount of clay you're using. And with this sculpture, we can do a lot with just an itty, bitty amount of clay. It's also fun to free build with your clay. Just take some clay in your hand and start to create the shapes that you would like them to be. So now I'm going to start thinking about how I want to take these simple forms and shapes and add them onto my sculpture and begin making it blossom and come alive with different colors. I can take this coil that I've made 
And I'm gonna, I'm gonna attach it to the base on this one. But if I wanted to, this is something I could wind all the way up my tree-like sculpture. Again, the way you start attaching clay is gonna be completely up to you. This is just one approach. There's no wrong way. I just wanna show you a couple different ways that you can attach this clay. And so now I've got this loose piece. You can see it's kind of hanging on on its own, but if I want to make sure that it's really sturdy, I can just pinch it. I'm a little delicate here. Pinch it on, push it into my stick here. I can add some of these small clay balls and I can put them on pieces of the twig. So if I had a little twig st sticking out, I can certainly just set it right on top like a nice blossom or, oh, I'm gonna press that in. I can also just take the, block, the dot and push it against the stick. And I'm using my two hands there to fasten it together. And so that's gonna stay on too. And you'll notice these are really pretty strong. Certainly, I'm gonna be delicate with it, but it should feel like it is sticking on there. And I just use a little bit of pressure, a little bit of pressure as I'm attaching it to the stick. So already, I'm starting to create my dreamlike tree. Now, the way you're using colors and the way you're using forms is gonna give your blooming sculpture its own personality and its own mood. The colors you choose might um, reference different seasons or different types of flowers or fruits that could grow on a tree. I think it's pretty interesting to see the difference between this natural stick that we found and then the way that these brightly colored clays look on top of it. It's a very strong, impactful duality. If I wanted to make more traditional petals, I can start with the center of the blossom already on there, make a couple petal-like structures out of clay, and then I can just attach them onto here. I can certainly use my hand building to build leaf-like shapes, have a little pointy edge to it. The way you choose to build them is going to make it have its own special dreamlike quality. There are, of course, many ways to go about building this structure. If you are having difficulty being so delicate with the small stick standing in the clay, you can work just on a stick without a platform. You can take a stick and then just keeping it on the table, just press the clay into the stick. It makes a wonderful sculpture as well, even if it's not standing up. You can, with this type of structure, you can use bigger pieces of clay, which is perfect for beginning or younger artists. This piece of um, this wonderful blooming structure, I started the process of building without standing it up and then stuck it into the clay afterwards. That made it a little bit easier as well. And the clay is a little bit larger and bulkier because of that, but beautiful blooming bright colors had the most wonderful time building these fantastic sculptures and thinking about Joanne Carson's work. It's exciting to think about all of the different shapes and forms that we can build with clay and the way that the clay contrasts against the found natural material of the twig. If you are working with friends or family, try putting all of your blooming sculptures together to create an imaginative forest. Imagine what um, season these blooming sculptures could be blooming in. Imagine what the weather might be like or what kind of characters may live in here. 
if you can find a table in your home to set them up all and display them, I just set mine in the garden just to see what they would look like sprouting out of the natural landscape. It is so easy to get lost in the details and to let your imagination run wild thinking about all the different things that can come sprouting up from the foundation of the piece. It's been amazing. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you and your family have fun creating together and building your own blooming sculptures. I'm going to be back here next month for another virtual family art Saturday. And until then, have a wonderful day. Happy creating. Goodbye.